Today I'll say something about the relationship between normalcy or normality, psychologically speaking uh, and philosophically speaking, you know, mental wellness, mental health, normality on the one hand, and socialization on the other hand. Uh, how is normality related to socialization and how does normality relate to freedom? Uh, these are interesting questions because in order to be no normality is a normative concept. And a normative, if I am normal, then I could also be abnormal. Only the possibility of choosing to be abnormal uh, allows me to uh, uh, freely be normal, to choose to be normal. And to choose to be normal uh, largely means to accept certain values, to accept, accept certain norms. And typically these are the norms shared by my society. So uh, the concepts of normality or normalcy are different in different societies. Uh, someone who is considered psychotic, schizophrenic, for example, in one society might be considered exceptionally gifted, special in a different society. They might be considered particularly valuable members of that society, whereas in the Western society someone who is schizophrenic is typically treated as a client of the mental health system. So, to be normal, I need to accept certain norms. Normality is a highly normative concept. But in order for me to accept norms, I must presuppose a degree of freedom to choose to either accept or not accept the norms. If I don't have a choice but to accept certain norms, then that has no value, no moral value, no normative value. This is something I am forced to do, so this is not my choice. And it would only be possible to uh, describe me as normal by a very large extension. Forcing someone to behave in a way which we define as normal uh, rules out our ability to consider that person fully normal, because in order to be fully normal, that person would have to voluntarily choose to behave in a way which we see as normal, right? If someone wishes to behave in an antisocial way, or they wish to constantly deviate from social norms in, in, in whatever manner, but they are forced by their family, by their social group, by their institutions to constantly abide by social norms. This is not the full sense of normality, normalcy. You can uh, force a psychiatric patient in a psychiatric ward to behave in certain ways by a combination of drugs and behavioral therapy and coercion. Often coercion is used in psychiatric wards in, in various ways. Compliance is demanded of uh, patients. Uh, uh, to the wishes and instructions issued by the mental health system staff. Uh, and this is not normalcy, because the normal, uh, uh, conditionally normal, you know, behavior is extracted from people. It's not their voluntary choice. So where's the space for freedom in our concept of normalcy? On the one hand, we can only choose what we are offered. We can only choose the options of uh, norms and values which our society offers us. Uh, it's very difficult for us to accept systems of beliefs and systems of values which simply don't exist in our environment, which we would have to learn about from uh, who knows what sources and, and become familiar with the way of life in line with those values and norms in who knows what ways. So, on the one hand, our choice is limited, and on the other hand, there must be a choice, there must be a principal possibility for us to make this or that choice. One choice or another choice. The choice of normalcy or the choice of abnormality. Now, uh, uh, if there is a choice to be normal or to be abnormal, then there is a degree of intentionality in mental illness. Then mental illness is not really an illness like other uh, medical conditions. Uh, it is what the psychoanalysts believed uh, was uh, a particular choice. Mental illness can be interpreted as a choice based on our freedom, a choice of abnormality, a choice which arises from a variety of reasons and is fueled by a variety of motivations, 
most likely by the motivation to compensate for the unbearable experience of encountering what Jacques Lacan called the crude reality of life. Lacan believed that the uh, real, with a capital R, the register of the real, of the uh, uh, raw, unprocessed uh, uh, content of our daily experiences, of our life experience, uh, is, is so unbearable uh, to the human psyche that it necessarily leads to psychosis. Uh, so the only way to uh, uh, gain, regain mental uh, wellness in the face of unbearable uh, of the stress of the un of encountering unbe the unbearable re unbearable real is to symbolically process that raw experience and give it meaning. According to Lacan, the raw experience, the raw contact contact with the world, is devoid of meaning, and our symbolic register, what he calls the symbolic with the capital S, is, is the capacity to endow the raw experience with meanings, meanings that allow us to psychologically meta metabolize the raw experience. And, and, and as for Lacan, mental wellness and mental health and normalcy uh, reside in the realm of the symbolic, not in the realm of the real. Uh, when our symbolic abilities are not sufficient to process what Lacan called the onslaught of the unbearable real, uh, we choose the third register. This is the register of the imaginary. So the register of the real is the first one, the register of the symbolic is the second one, the healthy one, and the register of the uh, imaginary is the third one. This is the register of psychosis. We venture into the imaginary, we swap the real with the imaginary, we lose deliberately lose contact with the real. In the symbolic register we have uh, a very clear, very consistent, very constant con contact with the real and, and, and we have that real under control by processing it through our symbolic categories. But when we don't have sufficient symbolic resources we simply abandon the real and choose the imaginary. This is the psychosis. Now, the psychosis is therefore a compensation for our absence uh, in the real and for the absence of the real in our life. But the real reason the real can't be absorbed into our life is the lack in our symbolic capacities. The symbolic capacities are structured by what Lacan calls the signifiers. signifiers. These are the orientals, the, uh, the lights by which we navigate our life. And the primary signifier for Lacan is called the name of the Father. Name of the Father. This is the signifier which is traditionally associated with the male role, the role of the Father in uh, a child's life. And that is the signifier that relates to what I started with, and that is socialization, norms, structure, relationships, uh, the acceptance of certain values, of certain belief systems, which constitute normalcy in a particular normative order, in a particular society, and this is associated with accepting the authority of the traditional role of the father in the bourgeois French family of Lacan's time, that was the role of the legislator, the norm setter, and the socializer of the family, whereas the role of the mother was the role of the unconditional caregiver and, and, and uh, supporter of the young child. Um, so uh, uh, the uh, symbolic uh, register is structured internally by the signifiers the top one of which is name of the father and the deficiencies in the symbolic register which cause psychosis which again is an exercise the ch choice for the for a psychosis is, is, uh, is again an exercise of freedom so the capacities of uh, the lack of the capacities of the symbolic which cause 
has to choose psychosis are associated primarily with the blockage or complete removal of the primary signifier name of the father. So this is the internal structure of the symbolic register in our psyche. So according to Lacanian psychoanalysis, freedom exists as a logical assumption and as a practical, uh, uh, at the same time as a practical necessity in, in choosing normalcy or abnormality, where the abnormality has various uh, faces. One is psychosis, as I said, which is a compensation, and the person with psychosis continues to be partly functional, but partly dysfunctional at the same time. And the second major face of um, abnormal, abdom, abnormality is the uh, so-called catastrophic outcome in um, psychoanalysis, and that is catatonia, that is a complete loss, disorganization of the person, disorganization of the personality and uh, the person's inability to control their body, to, to, to uh, uh, exercise any kind of coherent action. Contrary to popular belief, to popular belief in, in, in psychiatry that the only uh, catastrophic outcome in the psych uh, professions is suicide. Uh, suicide is not the catastrophic outcome according to Lacanian psychoanalysis. Suicide requires the person to be fairly organized in order to commit a suicide. One must have uh, sufficient coherence in one's personality to conceptualize, plan and execute a suicide. This uh, person who commits a suicide is still very much together, very much able to act. Whereas, the, uh, structurally speaking, the catastrophic outcome is catatonia, where the person is no longer able to decide anything or able to act. A person is so disorganized as, as, as a structure that uh, the person doesn't, that no longer exists, they, they can't make any decision. Uh, so the, the opposed, the other extreme to that catastrophic outcome, catatonia, is the, the ideal of a perfectly healthy personality, coherent resilient, able to tolerate stress, mature, whatever criteria we use to assess the health of a personality, they are relative because there's no ideally uh, healthy personality, there are only in, uh, various degrees of uh, coherence in, in one's personality organization and according to Lacan the exercise of freedom to be extremely healthy, very healthy to, to, to exist somewhere towards the top of that hierarchy of mental health is uh, associated with one's symbolic capacity. So a person who is better educated, who is more articulate, who uh, is more philosophical, who has more understanding of abstract concepts will likely be uh, more able to uh, withstand various onslaughts of the unbearable real and will have greater symbolic capacities and, and greater resilience to psychosis. Whereas a person who can only poorly conceptualize life and whose experience of the immediate reality is fairly uh, simple will be more susceptible to uh, uh, deciding to venture into the imaginary. So, uh, where we are on this spectrum of mental health and, and the way we exercise our freedom to be more or less healthy or more or less mentally unwell uh, depends on the strength of the two registers. The register of the uh, symbolic primarily and within it the, uh, uh, the degree of preservation and, and strength and functionality of the primary signifier name of the father, the fatherly structure in our psyche the patriarchal structure, the normalcy of our psyche, on the one hand, uh, or the strength of the temptation associated with the imaginary, which is an escape route uh, in the face of complete uh, destruction of the personality when uh, confronted by the unbearably real.